Is your brain too old to learn to code? In this video, I'm going to give you the pros and cons, give you some tips that make learning easy, and we'll just discuss the reality of the situation. Hey guys, my name is Steph. So, as you get older, it's no secret that our ability to learn becomes a little bit more difficult with some caveats and exceptions. So for example, if you are a lifelong learner, you keep learning new things as you go through life, you're gonna keep your brain more pliable and spongible. Meaning, if you learn, you get better at learning. So if you're younger and you're watching this, it makes sense to try out new things and learn new things throughout your life. This will create new neural pathways in the brain. It will make your mind more flexible will make you smarter. As I like to say, the more you learn, the more you earn. So keep learning. Now, if you're older, 40, 50, 60, 70, and, or 80, and you're trying to learn something new, yes, most for most people, it's gonna be difficult, more difficult to learn, not difficult necessarily, but more difficult than if you were 20. Simply, it's just biology, it's the way our brains are made. Again, unless you've been a lifelong learner, then you probably have a very spongy brain to begin with. Since for most people, it's a little more difficult to learn and it gets more difficult to learn new things as you get older, does that mean you can't learn to code? No, there are people, and you probably find people commenting on this video and my previous video, that who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s who are learning to code and they're making progress. I have found, and I've been teaching people how to code for a long time, and I've been coding since 1994, the biggest issue that people come across or hit, the wall that they hit when trying to learn to code, or anything else really, is not so much intellectual. It's not an intellectual problem for most people. It's much more of a psychological and emotional problem. Insecurity, inconsistency, um, self-doubt. I guess that's insecurity. You are very, 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 very likely to be smart enough to learn how to code. Because you're older though, you may have to uh, spend a little bit more time than if you were 20, but that's okay. One advantage of being older, we tend to become more calmer, more mature, more calm and mature as we get older. Um, calmness and consistency are very important when you're learning anything new, especially code. So let me jump into some tips that will help you to learn more quickly. Number one, well, let me read my list here. Uh, number one, if you're in better shape, if you're healthier, you're hitting the, the BMI, the body mass index, believe it or not, it will make you sharper, no question. As your body approaches its optimal weight and uh, level of fat, it, be, it, ha it has to devote less energy in ter terms of maintaining its physiological aspect and it, put, it can put more energy in other aspects of your life. If you're in less pain, you have less weight, you're, uh, you're healthier and have more energy, you're going to learn more quickly. So if you want to learn more quickly, you want to optimize your learning potential, get in shape. I know it seems counterintuitive, but trust me, it does play a big role. Uh, along with getting in shape, that means eating well, healthy foods, you know, you know, less, you know, natural foods, that kind of stuff. I won't go into a whole feel about health and nutrition. You can look that up elsewhere. Another thing you can do is very important. You got to sleep well. You got to sleep well. Sleeping is very important. You know how in the old computers they used to have to defrag a computer because uh, when computers are doing their natural processes, you know, saving files, opening files, saving files. When you're saving files, uh, the operating system will save bits of the files in different sections of, of your uh, long-term storage. And then what happens, all the files get fragmented. So you may have a text document and a piece of it may be here, another piece here, another piece here in memory. So that's why older computers operate slower because you have this fragmentation uh, of all your files uh, all over the machine. So that's why they have defraggers. Defraggers will defragmentate, reassemble these pieces so that so when you open up a file, you don't have to go to, the computer doesn't have to go to 10 different spots or 100 different spots in the hard disk to assemble a file. If it's defragged and it's brought all together, then it just has to open up the file one spot or less spots. Make sense? So yeah, sleeping, 
Sleeping is defragging. You're defragging your brain. That's why you got all these random thoughts in your, you have these weird dreams and stuff. I believe it's because your brain is just reassembling and reorganizing itself. That's my theory anyway. So yeah, sleep well. Everybody knows sleeping well has a lot to do with memory and energy and so forth. You want to sleep well. Uh, yeah, sleep well, drink water. Yeah, drink water. You know, check your body weight, look up online, see what kind of water, how much water you're supposed to drink a day. For for me, I'm 6'2". I'm supposed to drink a lot of water. I don't drink nearly enough water, I confess. But yeah, drinking water, you start to feel better and you start to be able to think better. Trust me. Um, you may want to look for what I would characterize as cognitive foods. You can look that up. It depends on your health. So mind your health. I'm not a doctor. You're going to go check your, talk to your doctor, all this stuff. I have to say that for obvious reasons. But anyway, for example, coffees, uh, healthy food, uh, anything to get the mind going. I know that I think, I believe rather, that coffee will increase your cognitive capacity by 50% for a period of time. We just covered all the physiological things you can do to improve your learning ability. Another thing you can do, okay, so let's talk about strategy rather. So strategy, take your time, be patient. One thing I always talk about in my mentoring group, Shameless Self-Promotion, links below, um, I talk about how frequency of exposure is far more important than how much time you spend learning something. So what does that mean? Frequency, how frequent you listen or learn something. If you spend an hour a day, four days a week, that's four hours, that's going to, have, that's going to give you a far better impact than if you spend eight hours a day, eight hours on Sunday, one day a week. Why? Because the brain responds to what it sees on a regular basis. So if you are exposing your mind even 20 minutes a day to coding, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, take Wednesday, take Thursday off, Friday, Saturday, or just Friday, you expose your brain to a little bit of coding every day, you'll see that it will start uh, applying resources to learning how to code. It will do what it needs to do to make that easier. So one day, as you're writing your code out, it's not clear, you don't understand, it's all, and then one day you wake up and you go, oh, now I understand. It's so easy. That's because the connections have been made in the brain. So if you feed your brain well, nutritionally, sleep, etc., exercise, um, and then you frequently expose your mind to these new concepts, you will learn very quickly. So some final tips when you're learning how to code. You've got to write a little bit of code every day. One thing I teach people, you get a theoretical understanding through practical application. So what does that mean? If you want to understand the, the theory or the details behind the code that you're writing, whether it be JavaScript, HTML, or Java, or C Sharp, or whatever it is you want to program in, by writing the code blind, even if you don't understand everything, you'll find that by writing it, and breaking it and then writing it more, fixing it and writing it, even if you don't understand everything, by writing it over and over again uh, and trying different variations, that will lead to a theoretical understanding. I, that's how I uh, learned to code personally. I remember back in the day, I'm writing, I forget the first language, was Perl or something. So I'm writing this language. I didn't quite understand everything, but I had to take that leap of faith. I had to go, okay, I'm going to write this out. I know this is going to work. I'm not sure exactly why it's working, but I know it's going to work. So I write it out and I got it to work and I move on to other things, keep writing code, keep writing code. Then one day, that stuff that I wrote that I did not understand why it worked, all of a sudden it just dawned on me why it worked, that neural connection again. So yeah, write code daily. There you go. I hope this is useful. My whole platform, Studio Web, links below are designed around these cognitive theories of education. So uh, they'll make learning to code easy.